there is a fight going on right now for your creativity, for your sanity, and your spiritual life. And no, I'm not exaggerating. You're calling to make films, video games, to write novels, to create virtual experiences. Hangs in the balance. You see, the enemy wants to discourage you, immobilize you, and take you out. And by that, I mean either bring you to a halt by locking you in depression so you never finish that novel or that script. But what he really wants to do is make you give up on your gift altogether. God has gifted you and called you, and that's why the enemy will attack you. As Jesus said, don't be surprised if they hate you. They hated me. I'm not talking about this in theory. I'm talking about this in personal experience. I've been swallowed by depression. I've been tempted to give up. But I kept coming back to the one thing I know. God called my wife and I to transform the way Christians engage the mainstream culture, and in particular, equipping artists and professional creatives like you to live and create in such a way as to honor Christ and to be salt and light in the culture where they live. But make no mistake, this is a fight. The enemy is playing for keeps. So the question is simple. Are you in this for good? Are you counting the cost like Jesus told us to? Are you willing to endure frustration, shame, betrayal, doubt, all those things that happen to entrepreneurs and artists and to Christians? Do you believe God is with you? And that if God is with you, it doesn't matter who is against you because God has got you. He's got you right where he wants you. As John tells us in chapter 10, God has you in the palm of his hand and he will never let go. No one can snatch you out of his hand. If that's you and that resonates with you, then let's talk about what it means to be bold in your creative life and your spiritual life. Welcome, I'm Joel Pelsu, president of Arts Entertainment Ministries. Our passion is helping you as a creative professional succeed in your creative life and grow deeper in your spiritual walk. Because your creativity and your spirituality are designed by God to be integrated with each other. They're not meant to be separated and lived in a compartmentalized world. God designed them to work in concert with one another. And our passion is to help you do that. If that's your passion, take a second, like and subscribe to our channel, share it with your friends. We're so glad you are with us. Oh, and before we jump in, I want to let you know we have online courses for you on artist calling to understand your calling better. We have Catalyst, training artists around the world how to be better entrepreneurs, make more money, and grow deeper in your faith as you grow your business. And if you want the deep theology, we have our Bezalel Core Foundations, part of our institute, to really steep you in deep theology for being artists in the mainstream world, being salt and light. And we've had pastors, professors of a lot of Christian colleges have come to us for that. We can really help you think more deeply about your faith and craft. If you're interested in that, take that class. You can find all the links down below. With that in mind, let's jump in. Now, I want to start with a classic verse we've all heard. If you've been in church very long, you've heard this. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. The Bible tells us over and over, fear not. The Bible also tells us, be bold, be strong, be courageous. Even in this first chapter, three times we hear those words. Why? Are you super strong? No. And even if you are 21 years old, and top shape, that isn't where your strength comes from. You need something deeper. Are you always right? No. How, how unbearable would you be if you were always right? We all screw up. We all fail. And therefore, we all need to be humble as we become honest about our strengths and weaknesses. Are you perfect in the way you do your craft and life? No. It's not even a real thing. There's a perfection. So here's the point. It isn't about you. It's about trusting in the God who gifted you and called you. He is perfect. He is faithful. He is wise. God never makes a mistake. And God has called you, gifted you, and then promised you he will never leave you nor forsake you. He is your strength. He is your rock and your anchor. So we are bold and courageous because we are called by this God. We know the God of the universe is our Father. He has all the resources. He has everything we need. Now, and that doesn't mean life is going to be easy, but we are never alone. We always have a reason to be thankful, to give praise, and to rejoice in our salvation. And what's more valuable than that? So when the Bible tells you to be bold, confident, and courageous, remember, this isn't a believe in yourself, like some Disney commercial. How awful would that be? Every time you mess up, you would question 
everything because you can't trust yourself. You make mistakes. So this isn't believing yourself. This also isn't a whip up your confidence by mindfulness and positive thinking through a coach. That may last for a few minutes, but it doesn't last. No, the only foundation that works is God's faithfulness, which gives stability and strength to your life, and it never falters. So if you want to honor God with your gifts, if you want to find that boldness talked about in the book of Joshua, then we need to come back to an understanding of who God really is, what his calling means, and what it looks like to live out that calling. I'm going to put a link down below. We've created an online masterclass called Online Artist Calling Masterclass. Simple enough. Sign up for it, watch it, and trust me, you'll be encouraged. Lots of people are blessed just by our masterclass. But there are other people who want to get real serious, and they do go ahead and buy our online course. It includes a one-on-one -on -one consulting session with me, where I can really help you work through the unique challenges you face that aren't covered in the general content. But either way, at least listen to the masterclass. You will be encouraged. It's your choice if you want to go ahead and buy the course and then talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. Now, what I don't want to happen is for you to let another year go by, wrestling with the same old nagging questions about your calling, how to balance family and career and media and entertainment or the arts or video games. It's lots of challenges. We've lived here in LA for over 20 years by ministering to people in New York, LA, other regions, London for a long time. Or maybe you're wondering, is it okay for a Christian to pursue the career you're looking at in the, in the, in the arena you're looking at, film, TV, video games, whatever it is? For some of you, you know it's okay. It's not a question like, Joel, that's basic. For other people, it is not. For others, you've had friends and family members that are well-meaning tell you you can't be a video game developer or you can't do art and glorify God unless it's, unless it's explicitly Christian or explicitly for worship. And you wrestle with guilt and shame. And I'm telling you, you don't have to. <laughs> we can help you with that. Come uh, check out that calling course masterclass. And, uh, and we can help you really understand biblical core truths that dispel that myth. It, it's a misnomer. It's not true. It's not from God. It, it's, not, it's not in the Bible. So God calls his people to be salt and light in all kinds of industries and creative professions. And I'll show that to you from the Bible so you know once and for all what God's Word really says about art, artists, creative professionals, filmmakers, game developers, VR experience creators, whatever you are. Now, the interesting thing about the first chapter of Joshua is that Joshua is told three times to be strong and courageous. There are giants in the land. It will take hard work. It will take faith in God's goodness. It will require fight after fight after fight to take the land. Just because God said, this is what I called you to do, never means it's going to be easy. <laughs> in fact, if it's worth doing and it's what God's called you, you'll probably get some serious resistance. Don't miss that. The command to be courageous is also preparing you for the fight. Because any creative career will require you to fight. Push through and persevere when you don't feel like it, when not as many fans buy tickets, when the film doesn't produce the box office results you wanted, when the game you produced and shipped had some glitches. Like, there are all these things we all faced. You know, and to be honest, too many people come to Hollywood with a dream of being discovered, and that has happened. There are a few people, but it's not common or typical. The joke is really that for an actor, it takes 10 years to become an overnight success. 10 years years. You, it looks like overnight success, but they've been there working hard. And while we're getting real, I remember years ago, uh, my wife made $10,000 acting that one year. We realized she made more than 95% of all Screen Actors Guild card holders. Yes, 95% of actors who have, a, have that union card, now SAG-AFTRA, didn't make $5,000. So it is a grind. It is hard work. You need someone to help you learn that business and how to how to create opportunities for you. But that's another discussion. You can check out Catalyst. But I want you to know it is hard work. That's what it takes. And God's calling you, whatever calling you are, to be strong, to have courage, because God is with you. So what's my point? It's a fight. It's a hustle. It's a long-term, hard-fought journey. Some people, it's a side hustle. Sometimes it's a full-time job. You get to do that, but it is work. And some Christians get this vague notion that life in Christ will get easier. It simply isn't true. Life will get more meaningful. 
you can have more joy in your salvation. You can find peace and joy in the hard work and the journey, but it doesn't mean you will have an easier life. The goal is a life that is meaningful, living for Christ while we become more like Christ. And that takes humility and boldness, thankfulness and courage. And I'm emphasizing courage and the call to be bold because that's what you need at the beginning of the year. We got through the holidays. It's time to go after it. Our culture is getting more and more hostile to Christians, but our calling is not to back down, be silent, get afraid, let the culture get worse, and remove our salt and light from that culture. No, our calling is to be wise and shrewd as serpents and to be courageous, like Martin Luther with civil rights or Dietrich Bonhoeffer opposing uh, Hitler and helping the church realize this is wrong. We should not be going along with this. So it's, the fight's not going to get easier. And on top of that, we are encountering a cultural change through AI, machine learning. Now is not the time to sit back and just watch what happens. Now is the time to be bold, be courageous, to pivot, use your creativity to create new works of art, types of art that minister to others, and provide salt and light in the culture where you live. Things are changing quickly. Don't be afraid. You know, don't be afraid. God's with you. God's still on the throne. He's still in control. So now it's your turn. What's holding you back? Have you lost faith that God is good? Or that he has a calling on your life? Have you lost hope? There's one solution. Go back to God. Admit you're living as if God isn't with you, or isn't active, or as if he doesn't care. You've lost sight of who God is. Take time to read the first chapter of Joshua and learn that God wants us to be courageous, to be bold, to take risks. But you'll notice Joshua is also called to know God's word and to be obedient. This isn't just about us. God is not a spiritual vending machine who gives us whatever we want. No, this is a relationship. We're called to honor him with our lives and to go to him boldly in prayer. It's both. It's that relational dynamic. Now, some of us may need to repent of bitterness towards God. Things have not gone well and we've gotten bitter. I've had to do that. Some of you may need to repent of unbelief. You just stop really trusting and believing God is good or that he cares or he's sovereign. I've had to do that too. But wherever you are, don't wait. Take the time now. Start the year off right. Be vulnerable and honest with God. Ask him to forgive you and give you the gift of faith and the gift of boldness. And then prepare to face the giants in the land where he has called you and ask him to show you how he wants you to use your gifts to glorify him through your art, your film, your video game, whatever creative talent you have. And let me know down below, are you starting the year by taking your request to God? Are you being vulnerable about what you need, repenting, and putting your trust in God? That's the way to start the year. I always love to get your comments, so put those down below. And while you're there, please take a second, hit the like, subscribe buttons. And if you enjoyed this, I urge you to check out our website and our online courses by clicking one of the links down below. We have our calling course for Artist Calling, Understanding Your Calling. We have our core foundations of Bezalel, the Institute, really deep theological understanding of the arts and theology. Or we have Catalyst, training you how to be an entrepreneur make money, develop your craft, and honor God all at the same time. Check out those links. And as always, I pray that God may bless you and equip you to be salt and a bright light in this dark world that desperately needs it. Thank you so much for joining us. Check out another one of our videos right here.